Hello everyone, it's your options guy. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the five reasons why I don't think anyone should actually be buying or trading crypto, or at least if you're if you're planning to hold crypto, whether if it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever, if you're planning to hold it for long term, um, I really don't think that you should be using Robinhood. Personally, I do like Robinhood. I like using it for just buying regular stocks. They they have an easy platform for options and and they just make it very simple, like user friendly to to execute orders and do a lot of stuff. However, for crypto, if you're if you're planning to actually like hold long term and or if you plan to do anything really with crypto, um, I don't suggest that you hold it and Robinhood and then I'll go into the five reasons why I think you shouldn't do that. Now before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe and, and comment if you have any questions. And also I just want to emphasize I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my opinions and basically doing this for entertainment purposes. Alright, so let's get into it. So the number one reason why I think should definitely scare you in holding any money in or crypto money in Robinhood is because there's no FDIC or SPIC. So basically what that means is um, if you just open up your Robinhood account and then go to Bitcoin, scroll all the way down at the very bottom, you see right there it says cryptocurrencies available on RHC are not stocks and your cryptocurrency investments are not protected by either FDIC or SIPC insurance. And that says you can learn more in the help center for Robinhood. So let's go ahead and click on that cryptocurrency investing right there. And that, that takes me to more information about cryptocurrency investing for Robinhood. So right there, it tells you about market orders. It tells you about limit orders and so on. And, and then order sizes and just a lot of information right here. But basically, we want to get into the part where it talks about, yeah, right here, Robinhood Crypto and Robinhood Financial. So your cryptocurrency assets aren't part of your Robinhood financial account. So I guess it's really important to to take note that there's two different um, accounts, or at least Robinhood um, basically breaks it down to two, two different accounts. So once your financial account, which basically includes your stocks, ETFs, options, and so on, and your Robinhood crypto only contains your, your crypto Basically, I think what what they're, what they're saying is they're calling it securities. So let's get let's continue. It says Robinhood Crypto is licensed to engage in virtual currency business by the New York State. And then it says right here, Robinhood Crypto is not a member of the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority or the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. So cryptocurrencies are not stocks and your cryptocurrency investments are not products protected by either FDIC or SIPC. And basically, it, yeah, so if you're just like reading that, you're like, okay, what does that really mean? So to me, that basically means, um, basically the crypto cryptocurrency exchange that's going on in Robinhood, it's not, it's not technically regulated and there's no insurance basically around it so i try to get more information about like what this means and basically I, I reached out to customer support and i mean i actually do like customer support in Robinhood. um i think they've definitely upped their game on customer support usually every time i have a question they usually reply like within a couple hours but yeah so i reached out to them and i was like hey so if i have all this money in crypto like let's say bitcoin right if i have all this money in bitcoin and then all of a sudden it just like goes away somehow like like what happens like like let's say i lose like ten thousand dollars like will Robinhood basically compensate me that ten thousand dollars do they have my back you know like what happens because i even told them like i'm reading all this information that it's not it's not backed by by the um it's not SIPC uh, backed or FINRA, or it's not a member of the FINRA, and and so on. So it, it just doesn't have FDIC like the that protection and so on. So I'm like, so what does that mean? Like, am I gonna lose ten thousand dollars and then that's it? Like, like nothing's gonna happen. 
So basically, this is what they came back with. So this was the response. Basically, they said, the majority of your coins are held offline, giving an additional layer of protection. We also carry crime insurance to protect a portion of the assets held across our storage systems. The policy is underwritten by certain underwriters of Lloyd's, the world's leading insurance marketplace. Additionally, we use cutting edge securities measures that are both technology and process driven to secure your coins. Coin transfers are only authorized for a select group of people on various teams. We also hire third party security experts to test our systems regular regularly to ensure that we're building the most secure systems possible. You can check out our help center for more, more information. So obviously they didn't come back with a yes or no type of answer. They, they, they weren't like, yeah, like if you lose $10,000 in crypto for whatever reason, because like it was hacked or something like that. And it wasn't like because you executed anything, then you know your money's protected. They didn't. They didn't say that. So because they didn't say that, that kind of just like worried me. And I was like, man, maybe I probably shouldn't have my money in Robinhood, in crypto at least. Like, like I'm okay with like the stocks, like and options and all that because they said that that's protected. And however, the the crypto side of things doesn't seem like it's protected. So that made me basically like pull out and just look for a different exchange. So um, I'm now in Coinbase and I've done a lot of research on Coinbase. So to me, Coinbase feels a lot more safer having my money there, at least compared to Robinhood. So yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I basically wanted to like create this video so I can kind of like somewhat educate those that don't know that um, to me personally, it's I don't feel as safe as having money in crypto in my Robinhood account. Okay, so reason number two why I don't think you should be using Robinhood to be buying or selling crypto is because of the high spread. So what does that mean? So let's say I want to buy one Bitcoin, you know, so I go ahead and click buy. So naturally, I, I think oh, I'm just going to buy it at the current price and and there's not going to be any fees, you know, because Robinhood says there's no fees and so on and you know life's good however if you can see right here the estimated price is showing is is 32,698 so if i go back here like currently it says 32,648 but why why is it saying 32,700 so there's like a, like a 60 or 70 dollar spread basically so to me, that's that's not as much fun because I'm basically paying seventy dollars more than what it currently is. And yeah, you can use uh, limit orders and stuff. You can set your limit order and everything. But even by doing that, like I've done many limit orders and they they almost never execute unless if the price is way below my limit order. So it still has a high spread. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like, you know, Robinhood in a way, it's kind of like um, stealing your money without you knowing if, if you don't catch like that spread, right? Like if you don't catch that it's charging you, you know, that extra $70, then you can just be giving away money right there. All right. So reason number three is because there's no wallet. So I know Robinhood has been or at least I think they've said that in the future they plan to to have actual wallets. But currently, if you buy crypto in Robinhood, you're you basically like it just sits there. <laughs> you're not able to do anything with it. So the, the only thing you could do is sell it and get back, um, you know, your fiat currency, which it could be like dollar or whatever you're using. So so after you sell, then you can like use that money. But if you if you have crypto, let's say you have one Bitcoin, right? You can't really do anything with that Bitcoin. You don't have like your own wallet. You can't transfer that Bitcoin to a different wallet. Like let's say you open up like a Coinbase account, you can't transfer it from, from here to there or or any other type of wallet that, that you create. Or let's say you have some like debit card that lets you use your Bitcoin. You won't be able to, to do that with Robinhood. So there's a lot of a lot of things that you can't do basically. And it would just sit there and then you would have to eventually sell it in order to do something. So that to me was like another big reason why you shouldn't be using Robinhood to buy crypto. All right, so for reason number four, I'm putting down as no margin availability. So basically what this means is um, normally if you want to use margin, like let's say you set up your gold account and then you 
you have like 100 shares of Apple or something, right? You can go ahead and turn on margin and then basically you're, you're borrowing from Robinhood, but Robinhood is using your stocks as collateral. Well, that's not the case in with crypto. So it tells you right here, keep in mind, your cryptocurrency assets are held in your Robinhood crypto account, not your Robinhood financial account. So they're treated as non-marginable with a maintenance requirements of 100%. So this means your cryptocurrencies need to be backed entirely by cash and can serve as collateral for equity equities positions. So basically you can like use margin if you have like let's say you only have 33,000 something $500 and you put it all on Bitcoin and then you try using margin, like it won't really give you margin because you already have all your money in, in, in Bitcoin. And basically Robin is saying like, Hey, you know, like, um, you basically, if you can, we, we don't want to let you borrow money because you have like a high risk type of asset. So it, for example, if you had like Apple or something like Apple stocks and something, then they can use that as collateral, but they don't want to use your your cryptocurrency as collateral so that to me was just like another like a no-no because i'm like oh man i can't use margin and margin like at least using margin in Robinhood, i think is really good because it's only 2.5 percent you see we five percent and they cut it down so it's like really good but um yeah it just sucks that you can't <laughs> you can't use margin to you know to buy um crypto unless if you you have cash or other stocks as collateral so yeah but then also i'm gonna make a, a video later on of how like you can use Robinhood margin to buy stocks i mean sorry to buy crypto and other exchanges and i think it's a pretty cool hack but um i'll make a, another video for that okay and lastly the fifth re reason is because there is a possibility that you can get locked out and you won't be able to to basically sell or do any trades on with your with your crypto and Robinhood. So it tells you right here on the very last paragraph. It says if your Robinhood financial account is restricted for any reason, your Robinhood crypto account may also be restricted. You will not be able to trade cryptocurrencies until the restriction on your Robinhood financial account is lifted. So let's say for example you went like balls deep on like options and and then like you lost basically all that money and then for whatever reason your account goes negative and then you can't like do any trades because it's negative so whatever you have on the on, on the cryptocurrency side like if you're restricted on like you know on your financial account then you won't be able to sell uh your cryptos basically or trade them like it may like that possibility may happen right so that that's kind of scary to know or also if you do like pattern day trading or if you're if you're basically marked as a pattern day trader in your regular account um i know in some cases like if you if you keep like doing it then like they may restrict you from from um basically doing anything so i think that's like another way where like you, you can get restricted on your financial account and then you won't be able to like do any trades on your crypto account so so yeah, it just, that would just like really suck. So, so yeah, basically it's those five reasons. So no FDIC or SPIC, there's a high spread. So basically if you want to buy crypto, like at the current price, it's not really at the current price. You have to pay higher and there's no wallet. Like you can, you can't deposit into like a wallet. You can't, you can't use your Bitcoin for other stuff. You can't transfer your Bitcoin. Like it just sits there and you're forced to sell if you want to do anything with that money. Um, there's no margin for cryptocurrencies in Robinhood and there's that possibility of being locked out from doing any trades. So with those five reasons, I think like no one should really be using crypto or trading crypto in Robinhood unless you're doing just like small trades here and there maybe. But especially if you're doing long term, I, I really don't think you should be using Robinhood, at least for crypto. I mean, again, I like Robinhood for, for stocks and options and everything else because I feel like it's really easy it's a really easy platform to use um very user friendly however for cryptocurrency i i wouldn't recommend it anyways that's it for today's video if you liked the video make sure you like subscribe leave any comments if you have any additional questions and make sure you're on the lookout for the next videos i'll, I'll be making I'll, i'm going to do a Robinhood versus coinbase type of 
video and other videos re regarding um cryptocurrency knowledge and stuff like that so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video